G'day everyone, Average Alexis here, hoping you're having a good one. And welcome to what is probably going to be one of my most favourite tutorials for ages. Um, I'm doing claw marks. Uh, so today's tutorial is the thing with liquid latex and that sort of makeup, it takes time and you've got to be willing to put the time in to wait for it to dry properly and to make it look realistic and all that sort of thing. So there's a lot involved in it, but if you love doing something, then it's worth it. Uh, so I have a bunch of stuff on the bench here with me. I think it's probably going to be better if I explain what I'm using as I go along. Um, the main thing that I have found when using liquid latex is start with a clean face. Um, the only thing that's on my face is my moisturizer, which is probably a good thing anyway. So I have this beauty blender, um, it's on a stick. I use this one to put the liquid latex on my face. We're gonna be doing the claw marks here, um, just because it's one of the easier spots to do because you've got such a wide canvas to do it on. Um, so basically, it's like any other beauty blender. You just put the product on there. The liquid latex I use is white and it practically dries clear, but you just want to this is base. This is going like everywhere. All right, so it doesn't look like anything right now. Okay, it's not going to look like anything for a while um, until I start getting it together and that sort of thing. So the liquid latex that I use is the BYS FX range. Um, previous video, I used their stuff because I love their stuff. But yeah, so. This now has to dry to a point where it's like tacky um, and not liquidy. Like you don't want it coming off on your finger, but you still want it wet enough that something will stick to it. A little tip for when you're doing anything involving liquid latex, make sure you're wearing old clothes. I have a really old shirt on right now and really old shorts. Um, I tend to wipe my hands on my pants a lot when I'm doing makeup and that sort of thing. But yeah, if you don't have time, which sometimes I don't, um, I use the hairdryer trick. You can use a hairdryer to um, speed up the process. I will probably do that later on in the video. I'll skip that for you because everyone knows how to use a hairdryer these days. Um, but yeah, it's waiting for stuff to dry that takes the time. Um, liquid latex you have to be willing to put the effort in so you've got to be willing to put the time in but the end result personally I think is worth it um, but yeah I'm gonna I'm gonna wait for this to get a little bit more tacky that sounds really weird but a different consistency and I'll see you in a second guys okay I'm back so I went ahead and um, started ripping up the toilet paper while I was waiting um, I've only taken one piece off like one tiny little square of it. What I've done is I've got rolled it over a few times. You only need strips maybe about this wide when you're starting with it. But yeah, I found that this is how the easiest way for me to do claw marks. Um, I tried to do them where you just layer the toilet paper on top of it and then cut through it. But that was actually really difficult for me to do. Um, you can try it that way. Uh, I did do it that way when I did a um, cut mouth. But yeah, this is this I have found is a little bit easier to do. So you're wanting to work out the placement of where you want these claw marks to go. And again, this doesn't look like much when you start, but it's about the end result. usually go back in with like jagged pieces and that sort of thing to add to it but yeah so basically just tearing strips off of toilet paper um, don't get really thin toilet paper because it will just fall apart in your hands but yeah it's as simple as that um, a lot of people were stunned last year when I did it and I just kept saying all I'm using is liquid latex and toilet paper and they're like wait really like it's this, it's not a secret. Like anyone can do this. I'm hoping you guys are able to see me doing this though. So. 
But yeah, I have fun doing things like this and it probably is really gory and not girly, but I don't care. <laughs> The good thing about toilet paper is you can just rip off the bottom bits that you don't want to use. Um, I sometimes keep these bits because it looks like skin dangling off of your face. I know, really, really gory, but again, I, I love this. Like, this, this shit, this is my favorite stuff to do. But yeah, um, it's, again, it's all about how much time you're willing to put into doing this. I, I think my final zombie look for... Uh, work. Um, yeah, I I dressed up as a very, very, very injured zombie. Um, that was when I had attempted to do the that was when I had attempted to do the claw marks, but using just the sh like the one sheet of toilet paper over the top of it, and it. I ended up looking like I had a big just chunk of skin missing because I just pulled all the toilet paper down and filled it in with black and fake blood and stuff. But yeah, I had a chunk of skin missing here. I think I had like a scratch here. I had a bullet wound here. I had bruising all over me. I had the costume. I had, it was just, it was an effort and a half, but holy crap, it was worth it. I loved it and that claw mark, that one's not quite where I want it to be, but I'm gonna leave it sit. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna disappear again for a second, try and touch this up a little bit. Okay, so I'm back again. Um, it's been a few minutes, I let this dry a little bit more and I finished off the third claw mark. I know this doesn't look like much right now, I, but once you let this dry off a little bit more, you can already see that some of the liquid latex is starting to dry clear. Um, this is where this is where it starts to look more realistic, okay? So you take your brush and you're basically painting on the liquid latex over the top because you want to kind of set the shape, I guess, um, and set the toilet paper down because if I was to put makeup on this right now, it wouldn't work. Um, <laughs> I've tried, believe me. I The first few times I fiddled with this stuff, it didn't work the way I wanted it to. Um, so yeah, I've, I've gone through a lot of trial and error with makeup and with liquid latex and everything and getting the looks that I want. Um, I haven't used it since Halloween, so I might be a little bit rusty on what I'm doing, but I'm usually pretty good at remembering stuff from way back when. I'm terrible at remembering stuff that happened five seconds ago. Uh, ooh. Drippy, drippy, drippy! You've also got to be prepared. If you're going to use liquid latex, you've got to be prepared to feel uncomfortable. Because right now this isn't too bad, but once it starts sticking to your face, um, it starts to feel a little weird. It smells a lot like glue and it feels like you're just you're painting glue onto your face because that's basically what liquid latex, it, ta bleh, liquid latex is. It's a glue that is safe for your skin. And again, I know this doesn't look like much now, but it will, I promise. Once I add all the makeup in and everything, Try and get it, try and get the liquid latex as close into spots as you can. Um, you don't want to leave any gaps because that means that stuff can then come up and undone. And if you don't have makeup in the right spots, it ruins the illusion. And this is, this is the part where I went wrong the first time. I didn't let things dry properly in between time. Um, you really do have to let stuff dry to its fullest, otherwise it just, it doesn't work, basically. So I'm gonna disappear again um, for a few minutes. Okay, so I'm back. I, in my time, it's been probably about 15 or 20 minutes. I went ahead and put foundation on one side of my face. Um, this has only got one more layer over the top of it and I did try and speed up the process by using my hairdryer um, just on its cool setting. 
so yeah so I brought this back now because I want to show you what I do now obviously this is white and that's not going to convince anyone so the next step is foundation um, and you really have to layer the foundation on like I'm not gonna lie to you it uses a lot of your foundation especially because it doesn't look the exact same color as everything else yeah so you just gotta layer the foundation on over the top um, once it's dry and try and get it in every single empty spot that you can so that's just that's really really basic covering the foundation up covering the foundation up that's not what I was doing um, covering the toilet paper and tissue paper up I would sometimes make it darker but what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to set my whole face with my powder foundation this will also change the color around a bit this um, takes away just how pale I am this adds a little bit of color back into my skin but not too much that's all probably as good as you're ever gonna get with the foundation uh, covering it up like that again it still doesn't look like much I'm not finished okay so up next I take my BYS effects oh no this isn't a burn wheel I've been calling it a burn wheel this is actually for cuts and scratches um, so yeah, back to my trusty old beauty blender, get the yellow, the lightest color first, because again, like I said in my bruise tutorial, a wound would have bruising around it. And plus zombies, green and yellow and that sort of icky rot rotting colors would look, that's what it would look like basically. So how is everyone? <laughs> <laughs> You're probably not going to answer me but because I'm recording this, but it's okay. Oh, that's going to bother me so much, but it looks like skin coming off of my face, so it doesn't really annoy me. So you're just going over the edges of the claw marks with this one. You don't want to put too much yellow in. Um, you can go as far down your neck as you want. Uh, it's all this is all personal preference, but yeah, so that's one big ass bruise on my face um, Next you go in with the lighter red um, I suppose this isn't really a red. This is a burgundy color, but yeah, and then you go along the lines of the of the claws marks now after this I'm gonna stop using my beauty blender just because it, become, it starts to become a hindrance after this because you've got to get a little bit more detailed and that sort of thing. But yeah, blending, 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 blending is always good. Um, don't freak out if you can see the foundation through it. That's why we put the foundation on, is to have the skin color look underneath it in case you're like me and you can't ever manage to do everything in one hit. Still not looking fantastic, but it will, I promise. Well, not fantastic, I'm not professional. This is just how I've taught myself to do this. And a lot of people told me last Halloween that I should put a tutorial up about it. So that's what I'm doing. And if this wasn't gonna come off my face as easily, um, I would be severely tempted to take this look out to basketball because I think that would be fabulous. All right, so I picked up a different brush. I'm just gonna go in and clean up these little bits here a bit um, just to not make it as obvious that there's lumps and bumps everywhere but if it's skin colored it's more or less okay besides you're gonna blend it with other colors and fake blood and everything so all right so I'm going into the darker red the burgundy and this is where you start being a little bit more careful of where you're placing stuff. So it's going to be the darkest. It needs to be on the inside, which is also where you're going to put the fake blood. So the dark red is going 
just on the inside and you're following the line down, the, the gap that you've created in between them where your skin is supposed to be missing. Oh, that one came up, that's okay. It's really weird talking about this sort of stuff because again, normally I'm sitting in my room on my floor doing this with the fan on and not like, it's weird trying to explain it because my brain does this probably a different way to what you would be if you were taught how to do it properly. Um, I by no means ever pretend to be a professional when it comes to makeup. I just do this because I love it. And I want other people to know that it is possible for you to do it. It may not look like a professional's work, but people still think it's real and it's cool because if I can manage to pull that off, then you can manage to pull that off too. So we're looking a little bit better now. Um, I'm probably going to go back in later and just blend the yellow out a bit more, blend the red out a bit more. But yeah, um, the last colour is it's either a really, really super dark purple or it's black. I can't ever quite tell. Um, but yeah, you're just going right in the middle. Right in the middle. Because this is where your skin's missing. Okay, so... I'm gonna go over the lot of this with the Beauty Blender just to try and smooth that out a bit um, and not make it as blocky. Good English there, Alexis. That's fantastic. Good Englishling. Eng <laughs> oh my god. Englishling. That's a new one for you, okay guys? Englishling. I can't speak. I'm gonna clean this brush up a little bit. Um, I normally would wipe it on my pants, but they're already kind of dirty and I just did wipe the rest of that on my pants. Get out of my eye, whatever it is. But yeah. This is turning out to be a super long tutorial. I'll cut bits and pieces um, to make it a little bit shorter because you guys don't want to sit through this. So I'm just going to go in now and clean it up. I'll see you guys in a, in a minute. Or, well, it'll only be a few seconds for you, but I'm going to go smooth this out and everything. And Okay, so I went away and I it took a little bit longer than I thought because my phone decided to be a fucking idiot on me and Siri couldn't help despite... <laughs> everything that she's supposed to be able to do. I went in and I expanded everything. I made it look a little bit more bruised. I added the purple in from my bruise wheel. Um, you can see it's starting to peel up now. Again, this is a tutorial, so I've rushed it. If the camera's at a different angle, it's because I took my phone off of the stand and moved everything around because it just fucking annoyed me. Um, but yeah, it's starting to come up now because I'm talking so much. Um, so it's starting to come off now, but yeah, I've gone in and I've done extra bits. Like I've just added some purple and I've neatened it up a little bit. Um, but the last step to this, if you're not doing anything else to your face, is the fake blood. One of them is my, um, BYS FX, uh, thick clotted blood, which I put in the middle here. Um, where the black is currently and it's like this stuff watch okay so it's got a little cover on it watch what happens when I take it up <laughs> I don't know if you even saw that it's creepy but awesome but yeah this like look at that it's like this goopy mess and I need to get more of it because I love it it only comes in this little tiny container but yeah this goes in the middle um, so the blood can get splattered kind of around the place because obviously you got clawed down the face by a werewolf let's say that's what happened if you got clawed on the face by a werewolf it's not going to be a neat thing so i'm just kind of splashing the blood around the place <laughs> that sounds so much more gory than it is um but yeah that adds the blood effect to it um this is the stuff that'll stay there and then i go in with my little it has no name, it's just a fake blood tube. It's, I got it from work. We sell them for $5 at Halloween time. And I buy a shit ton of them because I <laughs> love doing this. And this, I just stick it there 
and let it run down. You should have seen when I did, um, I dressed up as Auntie, uh, Jacksepticeye's alter ego. Um, and I did like the slash throat, well, not alter ego, Jacksepticeye's dark ego. And I did the slashed throat and like I had blood dripping down it, but this, look at this go. Look at it. Look at it go. <laughs> I kind of just help it along. <laughs> oh, drippy, drippy, drippy. Look at it. <laughs> it looks like someone's like clawed at my face. It's disgusting and it's horrible. And I usually, if I get any of the blood on my finger, I just kind of, oh, and there it goes. I just got a big glob of that. <laughs> Let's just pick that up and keep using that. Look at it all over my hands. Ew. Oh, it feels so cool and messy. Oh, there goes another bit. <laughs> it's dripping down my neck. <laughs> but yeah, you just go in and you go as crazy as you want. Do it however you want. Like, this is supposed to look like a really severe wound. Like, tell me that doesn't look like something slashed at my face and had a ball of a time going psychotic on me. <laughs> I have way too much fun with this. This is probably not a good thing. But yeah, I just, and this is, this is the end product. This, uh, <laughs> this, I really do wish I could go out in public like this when it wasn't Halloween and just scare the crap out of people, but I probably get in trouble. Um, but yeah, so, there's my claw mark tutorial. It took me forever to do it. Again, if you want to use liquid latex and do prosthetics and fake looking stuff, it will take time. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I, I don't know why I just did that because I felt like it. But yeah, I love doing this stuff. If you guys want to see me show you how to do more of it, I'm more than happy to. But yeah, this is like, I could have made it look more like the skin was dangling off my face. Um, but yeah, it's super hot in my bathroom. So that's a wrap for this video. Uh, thanks heaps for watching. Like and subscribe if you want to. Believe in yourself and be you. And I will catch you guys in the next one.